All righty. Okay. Well, we're going to roll tonight. You know, we have a lot of little technical difficulties, but welcome to the Illustrate Radio. I have my yeah. girl on here with me, Miss T. Gray. How you doing, baby? I'm good, Lucky. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Substituting um, for my for chalk. You know, she couldn't. You know, couldn't be here with us right now because she's having a little bit of technical difficulties. But hopefully, she can log on soon. I hope. <laughs> so, what's going on with you? How's your day been going? Everything. Man, my day has been busy. To be honest with you, <laughs> I've been more busy during this damn coronavirus stuff than most people but i'm not complaining happy wednesday happy hump day um happy we just finding out our kids about to be home the rest of the school year day <laughs> the school year, yay! oh that's so much fun <laughs> not at all all right so cyrus you know we miss you and this is crazy my day has been also very busy myself um, like I said, Cyrus, with you, we usually have your mix going on right now. Um, sorry, you could are experiencing technical difficulties as well. Hopefully, we can get everybody together and everything together next week. Um, but I am so I'm going to get right into to my segment, which is just my luck. So today was a little bit depressing for me. I, it started off really great though. I was like had this high, I'm listening to music, I'm vibing on the way to work, I got up early, I had my smoothie, it was all good. And then my friend sends me this article um, about a young man, his name is Ahmad Aubrey. And I'm not sure if you all heard about how this young man was jogging on February 23rd, 2020, and he was hunted and gunned down um, like an animal in the street. And uh, I hate to start the, the show off on a sad note like that. I'm going to try to pick it back up. But I just want to say that a lot is going on. And um it's kind of hard to stay and vibrate high with so many people just dropping around us and so many people being taken away from us. Um, and I, I'm trying to figure out what a, a possible solution could be, but I think we all need to start with really learning ourselves and the power that we possess as a people and then learning how to really stick together and come together um, also mm -hmm. as a people. We really need our men to really step up and stand up, but y'all got to know yourselves. Y'all have to learn yourselves as well. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, but Rest in peace to him. I hope that these men get convicted because they have not been arrested. There have been no charges that have been dropped. So I need for everybody in the state of Georgia to really show up and show out. I need everyone to share this story and make it so that it is so loud that they cannot ignore the noise. Um, it's so easy to get drowned out in so much noise that we become numb to this happening. But like that was in broad daylight. Could you imagine your kids right. going out for a jog for a 15, 20 minute jog, you know, and not being able to come back home? So, yeah, um, your memory is not going to be uh, in vain and we will make sure of that. So that's how we can. I think we need to come together and show more love and positivity and um, know that there's strength in numbers. So, yeah, but I'm going to hand it on over so to you because that goes to show you that no matter what's happening in society, that racism is still the strongest thing out there. It has an unbreakable bond. And mm -hmm. even with coronavirus and people being on quarantine and people dropping like flies from that, these people still took time out to hate, you know what I mean? Just to kill a person. So I think a lot of people lose that that focus and don't really pay attention to the fact that racism is still very strong. It's still very prevalent. It's still, it's still a constant very, fight. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more viral mm -hmm. than the coronavirus. It's more deadly than the height of HIV. It's, it's, it's stronger mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. all those things. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. hopefully the world at some point, <laughs> you know, because hate is a taught thing, you know what I mean? A child don't know to hate until you teach them. It's one of those things that until, you know, generationally people begin to break that chain, it's something that won't go away. But chain, yeah. I do have hope. Yeah, I do have hope. Yeah. I, so yeah. go ahead, boo. 
Would you want to say something? Oh, I just wanted to say, I just wanted to say one more thing. I was just saying that we have to re remember that we are gods. And I think, like I said, once we realize the power that we possess as a people and um, how we really outnumber, we are not the minorities. We are the majority. So I okay. think once we get that concept, we're going to be good to go. And then, you know, we can see a paradigm shift because we're going to have to take over. They're not going to give us respect because they're, they fear yeah. the power that we possess. So at the end of the day, we're going to have to take that shit. And go get so, the strap. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Lucky down where from. Oh, this what happened, but we about to get these straps though. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm not playing. I'm not, I'm not playing. Okay, so what you got for us? Love man? and is is love and what is really sacred. Um, so of course going through these past six to eight weeks it has been difficult in so many different ways to so many different people um and we've all kind of had to humble ourselves and prioritize of what matters what doesn't matter um you know last week we were talking about maybe a little bit about the mental health aspect of what's happening it's, it's a lot of changes a lot of changes for the grown-ups a lot of changes for the kids because they're home and people's mm -hmm. sleep pattern schedules just that and the third is oh but what made me think about what is really sacred is because things have now changed in their level of importance and what it really matters to us. Um, so I was reading and I came across this story where this dad, um, in an effort to punish his son for not getting up on time, mind you, he ain't got nowhere to go for real. <laughs> School <club>. but, <laughs> but, <laughs> He tried to get a routine. He did. He did. He was like, yo, he needs to be up at seven o'clock every day. And this is the way in the world. Woo, -de -woo -de boy is nine. Um, and he's like, you know, if you don't keep getting up on time, I'm going, you know, he's going to do something. I'm going to punish you whatever way it was. So the boy's on his last warning. Okay. So the dad, and if you're from me, if you're a parent, if you have little boys, um, you, a lot of kids are playing Minecraft. So Minecraft, you go and you create these worlds from nothing. And it's, it becomes your baby, you know what I mean? These these kids and a lot of adults mm -hmm. too, they're super, super into it. They dive in uh, mentally, emotionally, and it, it, it's their thing. So the boy's nine, he created this massive, ridiculous tower. So the dad, as his punishment, goes in, clears all his progress in the game and says, you know, you can't do the game for a month. Now, mind you, the boy been waking up late because, again, he ain't got nowhere to go for real. And he's probably been staying up late in appearance. Having staying up late as well. Yeah. Monitoring that, which is maybe what changed his sleep pattern in the first place. But let me tell you, when white people get in an uproar, honey, Minecraft will put white folks in an uproar real fast. Mm -hmm. So Real fast. And social media and the internet got wind in the fact that that was his punishment. Not the fact that the boy was on punishment or, you know, he could have got a beating like any other regular chow out here in the streets. <laughs> Dad took his Minecraft. Let me tell you, these people took to the internet and you would have thought they was are like Beyonce Beehive because they are mad at this dad. Like, how could you do that? He took a year to build that tower. Oh my, like he was like the worst parent in the whole wide world I'm because they feel like he's being cruel because now in this time, not only that game, but his progress or whatever the case may be, this has become sacred to that child. That child hasn't had any other right, outlet. Right, right, um, right. It's not right, like he's right. hanging out with friends. It's not like he's going outside. Friends, when he gets to socialize. Mm -hmm. He has, right, he doesn't have any of those things. This has now become sacred to him. And as a parent to take something sacred, they're saying, okay, now you're cruel. So my thing is, it does it does everything now become sacred to me because we on quarantine? Like I will snatch my daughter's phone in the New York minute. I got teenage daughters. So if you take their phone for them, that's that's like the death penalty. You might that's as well death. chop their head. That's off, the death you know penalty. I mean? that's yeah. The yeah. Mm -hmm. my head, take death my hands and my eyesight. I don't even want to see no more. <laughs> right, but as a parent. Your ass keep getting up. Like, guess what's gonna happen? I got a daughter now, my sixteen-year-old lover to death. But that girl <laughs> with Mister School Bus, like a professional school bus, Mister, like the people on Uber had just knew to be at my house at a certain time. I'm like, who's this? <laughs> she gonna take it. Home. Oh no, nigga, you're not gonna keep taking this Uber because you're gonna end up on punishment. So as a parent, I understand what the dad did. As a parent, I do, and I don't think that coronavirus or not that I should waver. 
as a parent and what my rules are or what I would expect or what I think you should do. Now at nine, if I want you up at seven, nine years old, I'm going to go get you up. I'm, I, I can't depend yeah, on a nine year old to set an alarm. To actually get up. And, and, right. And to get that to me is far fetched. But at the same time, will I snatch your game in these streets? Yes, I will. You'll be sitting in this corner bored out your mind. Sure would. I don't think the world's game, but I don't think I would delete. I don't think I'm gonna go that deep to delete and delete the progress. I would take right. I would take the game because, like, I I used to play video games. I was a diehard, you know, Super Mario Brothers, like Sega Genesis, Sonic. Like those when you pass those levels and you've been down there, like (laughs) thinking of strategies and all that kind of stuff. That's really important to you. Like I would never sit there and go and delete all of my son's NFL teams on his Madden or whatever. I wouldn't do that. I just take it away from you because you're still going to get to. Is not a Madden playing dad. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's not, not a Madden he's playing not. dad. That would not happen. He would understand. Like he would understand. Yeah. yeah and not yeah. even like I said, I'll take it from you. I have no problem. I'm going to take it from you. But like that was deep. Like that's something that helped spark creativity in him. And you just kind of killed that flame. But again, I'm not going to waver on what I would do. I just don't think right, I would take right. that much time out of my day to do that. I'd rather just take the game and the TV and all the electricity in the house. <laughs> all the electricity. It's just, you know, just, I'm just turning it off with the box. You can't even get You ain't even getting no light. I'm just going to use the box on your, your whole electricity. Everything is just gone. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, the lights in the bathroom could work. You know your little unit box. I'm going to get that unit. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to have it. Turn your, turn your unit off. You ain't going to be able to have no electricity to that joint. That's crazy. But so yeah, you ready so. to get into this with that ish? Oh, okay. Let's get into spit that is so Kia. Oh no, I'm sorry. Am I saying it right? Because it's Kaya. Kia. I think her name is Kaya. Mm-hmm. Kaya. Kaya. She be saying, "I love." I, I know who she is. I need to stop doing that. But Kaya calls um <laughs> Trina out for a hit for hit battle. Now, before I'm going to read the articles, you know, so I just know I'm staying on topic, but then I'm. <laughs> Then I'm going to give my two cents. But it says, during this quarantine season, celebrities have been keeping fans entertained with challenging each other hit for hit on Instagram. We've seen T-Pain versus Lil Jon, Teddy Riley versus Babyface. And now we just may have time for some women MCs to enter the ring. Philadelphia MC Kaya, most notorious for her hit singles, the only one I really know, is My Neck, My Back. I don't know, K. I don't know K-Wayne, and I don't know Snatch That Cat Back. I don't know those songs, but apparently those are the songs that she's trying to go blow for blow. During the live, Kaya was informed of the music battles that have been taking place lately. Once she was familiar with the concept, the Philly rapper got excited and decided she wanted a battle of her own. Oh, I want somebody to do. I can just imagine her saying that too, because she's so extra. Uh, Who want to try me like that? Who? So Kaya questioned almost immediately the person suggested that Kaya go hit for hit with Miami rapper Trina. Why would they do that? First though. You want to... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not going to cover it. Yes. Where I am a Trina <laughs> fan. That's what I'm saying. Okay. That's, I'm a Trina fan too. Oh my like. God. I am a Trina fan. Uh, and I Kaya just, said just, in this thing that she had 285 hits. Nigga, where? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out, like, yeah, I, like, like, I mean, pretty much, we all already know she don't stand a chance. Cause, boo, you had one hit. I don't know. Case snatch swag, lick that cat back from the front. No, I don't know. I don't even one know of songs that when you hear it, you be like, oh, okay, but it is, it's, it's no. nothing. Now, that Trina, that like the thing. To rock the people that would no none none whatsoever so whoever suggested that y'all were dead wrong for that in the first place like yeah blow for blow <laughs> I'm sorry Trina it'll, when I said I'm like eh, like is she serious because yeah. <laughs> to me even Babyface and Teddy R that was a good joint but Babyface got he been he been work Babyface work with all the or- artists and yeah right, this is right. different and Teddy Riley got a he got a repertoire man Kaya you ain't got a Inside. But okay, so if there was a matchup between two female rappers, who would you want to see? I would want to see Lil Kim. Hmm. I definitely want to see Lil Kim for the hits. I'm trying to think who else that I would just think that would 
be able to go blow for blow with her. All right, so let me just take it back old school for a second because I, I definitely want to see MC Light and Queen Latifah. I definitely want to see that. But I'm trying to that think of a uh, yeah, yeah, that would yeah, that would be that school. would be good. If it was all old school, then I would say them. Um, but I'm trying to think of Lil' Kim. Foxy was good, but she wasn't like, and that was like their little battle thing. But I don't mm-hmm. know. I think uh I think Little uh, Kim. I think a Lil' Kim. She yeah, she do by number. far. She got she got a yeah. lot of people outnumbered. So I'm trying to think it like even Remy Ma, you don't have enough under your belt to right. go in the ring just yet. Nicki Minaj, you, you ain't I mean you got but not really. <laughs> Who do you think so, could rock with Missy? Crickets. Um <laughs> <laughs> you can't oh. compare Missy. Miss Missy's in the she, league of her own though. She's she in the is. league of her own. She like is. she is she's like she's she like everybody over here, Missy Elliott took that shit and threw it all the way to like other galaxies seeing shit in the future that nobody couldn't even see her vision just just everything her outlook on music her beats yeah sick yeah because when they're doing so these matchups just, they're doing body of work and i don't even think people consider that we have enough it's not just what you heard them do it's the all the other music that they created everything that they wrote everything that they produced everything that they and, wrote and produced yes. it. Yeah, I don't. Anybody I just don't. I just. Yeah, no. You ever say nobody? Like she's like the greatest of uh, like as far as female rappers to embody everything three hundred and sixty as a whole, and yes. it's, and to be like you know what I'm saying like yeah she's I, I can't think of nobody like I'm gonna say MC Light and Queen Latifah would be it for me. Right, yeah, right. So it. on Friday, IG Live, you guys, Takashi Six Nine. He want to go live on Friday, okay, at 3 p.m., okay? He said, let's get this party started. Don't get scared now. Scared of what, Takashi's kid? You going to tell my business once I hop on the live with you? <laughs> you going to have, like, what, you going to snitch on me? <laughs> you going to be dropping dimes? <laughs> like, who is scared of you right now? You have no clout in these streets. None, but he's been real low key. Like he got out of jail, he's been real quiet. He made a very smart business move. Had you know his his money already on hand with his business moves that he made. So he hasn't said much. Um, I know that he has a large fan base. I know that people want to hear from him. I could mm-hmm. say I'm not one of those people who wants to hear from him because I'm in media. Of course, I'm a watch like everybody else. But what you gonna go in there and talk about? What you gonna talk about? Um, like, I, I'm, I don't know. I, yeah, I just, I, is he about to make a book announcement? Like, I'm just saying, like, are you gonna give a list? Like, the only way it's gonna be interesting listening to you. Nobody wants to hear you rap because we already know you can't do that. You can't battle no one when it comes to like bars. Like, you get writers oh. to help you with that, so that's dead. The only thing you can do is to make your story creative and to actually say exactly what you did, own up to it and say, yeah, I was a snitch and be the first snitch to go on record. You would get respect like that. You would get more views like that. Then I might listen to what you have to say. But for the most part, nobody cares. At least like, I'm going to watch. I think it's guess. a fishing scheme. You know what I mean? I think he's fishing to, to really see how many Mark's people up. are going to add up to this to this big money deal that he made. You know what I mean? He signed a $10 million dollar contract. So you still got to produce numbers. You know what I mean? So if you come on, of course, everybody's question is going to be, well, why? And people going to have a lot of negative stuff to say. I hope he's ready for that part. Because once you go live, especially if he pull people in to talk to him, so some people mm-hmm. going to ask him some hard hitting stuff that maybe he's not really ready to, to say. So I'm gonna listen. That's what I'm unless he keep it a bag. That's what I'm saying. Unless he, right? Like, unless he's gonna keep it a buck, like a. I mean, so raw that when people ask you those questions, that's the only way you're gonna gain your respect back. You have to go on record and say, "Yes, I did it." X, Y, Z. Next question, like that. <laughs> that's the only way that's going. Yeah, nobody. Yeah, nobody is listening to you other than that. You know what I'm saying? I know you so, are a big Barack. Oops, sorry. What was my phone? <laughs> I was about to say, I know you are a big Barack and Michelle. 
<laughs> let me, let me, I try to put up to this third. I don't know how the call still came through. <laughs> but anyway, I know you're a big um, Barack and Michelle Obama uh, like fan, especially Michelle Obama. I remember you talking about I so highly of her uh, get my arms and reading her book. My Michelle Obama arms. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, her. So their host, yeah, and, and you know what? And the thing is, this just goes to show how they're just so freaking awesome. I love them as well. Um, and more so for the family and core values that they have and how they really genuinely like love family and love people so much that they're doing, they're hosting a virtual graduation for the class of 20, for the entire class of 2020. Okay. Now, um, so the spread of the coronavirus has taken away many special moments for all of us, including the class of 2020. Those graduating um, this class year are finding unique ways to celebrate their compliments. And our forever president and first lady, yes, she is, have just announced that they have something special for their graduates. So whether you're graduating from high school or college, Barack, oh, that is so sweet. They're going to host the virtual graduation on June 6th. So, quote, some of you will be the first in your families to graduate from high school or college, making this occasion all the more special. And I know that none of you imagine you will be closing this chapter of your life through a computer or a phone screen, but I still want to make sure that your celebration, you get the celebration that you deserve. The tele, um, the graduation will be streamed through YouTube, and you will include a list of some of your favorite celebrities and special guests. As of now, it's both Michelle and Barack Obama. Oh my God, they got Lady Gaga, Condoleezza Rice. Yay, okay, <laughs> I'm not really a Condoleezza Rice fan. Um, Alicia oh. Keys. <laughs> Alicia Keys, Kelly Rowland, um, Zendaya, and more. The live stream is set to take place at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and Barack and Michelle would love for any graduates, family members, and friends to join the celebration. How cool is that? Kudos to them for that. That's really awesome. Yeah, that's it's cool. really unfortunate yeah. that... I'm, a senior. Uh, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. all for it. Yeah, I was just, um, we we're just talking about like how the college graduates and the seniors may, you know, how they feel. Like I have a lot of cousins who were looking forward to graduating. My sister is one of them who's looking forward to graduation this year. Um, and to see that, you know, we can't celebrate them because you, you do it for the celebration at the end. Like I worked hard, I did all this. Right. And now I got the kudos and my family's so proud and everyone's hugging me and giving me stuff and just giving me love, not even just stuff, but just giving me love mm -hmm. and really Really, and I earned that. So I, that really must suck. Graduation meant a lot to me. So I can only imagine um, those who can't or don't have the chance. So shout out to Michelle and Barack. But I know you over there like. <laughs> yeah. So it is very bittersweet. Um, this is my oldest child. Um, so my first baby. Um, so this would have been my first high school graduation, you know what I mean? And as a parent, it is a successful yeah. moment to know that you got your child to that point. Um, we mm -hmm. had just bought her prom dress right before, like two weeks before everything started to shut down. And I'll tell you that my daughter looked like an absolute princess in her prom dress. And then now she has, she can't even wear it. You know what I mean? She, we, they, they, we haven't even, couldn't even pick it up from the store because, you know, everything just shut down. Um, so it I'm is sorry, very bittersweet. Girl, yeah. it hurts my heart. I'm trying to tell you, to my, my my baby. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, when you said you know, your first, when you said your oldest. first, that's the moment oh, you baby. dream of. Yeah, yeah, I'm I sorry. Wait to hear her name. <laughs> you know what I mean? And see her walk across the station. I mean, my daughter has worked hard. She has worked hard. She's had a 3.8 or higher GPA the entire school year. Like senior year, she's been killing it. And I'm so very proud of her. Um, so even with what the goal was with what's going on in the world, you know, people are doing different things. People are doing parades now, you know, with the, the drive-bys and things like that to kind yeah, of show, creative. you know, that, you know, you know, just that support. Um, but it's definitely bittersweet. But I, but I do appreciate the Obamas to even take this step to say, hey, let's recognize you. Um, this is something that our current president probably would never ever do, <laughs> you know what I mean, in a million years. Um, and to put on such a great show and to have these 
amazing artists um, to just give these kids something different, something that's something that is their own. I think that it is very, very special because it's not just my child. Of course, it's, it's children all across the nation who are class of 2020 mm -hmm. and not just high schoolers. There's, you know, college grads and, and, and all of that. And so, like I said, it, it, it's bittersweet for me because as a parent, I want, I, <laughs> you, you just not, that's not something you can recreate. Um, but at the same time, this is one of those parts of history that, you know, we're, we're a part of history. How, how be it negative, we're a part of history right now. And these are stories that we're gonna be sharing with our grandchildren about our experiences and what we went through. And it's a learning, process, you know what I mean? We're, we're learning a lot about ourselves and about people, about human nature. Um, and so even though these ceremonies who, you know, they not necessarily are custom because we wouldn't, we didn't come from here, they've become important to us. They've become tradition to us. And so what do you do when you don't have those traditions? You create new ones. So yeah, right, it's going to be right, new right. traditions coming out of this. Um, and it's going to be some things I'm going to do for my daughter that, you know, I'm going to show her how, how proud I am of herself. You know, it, it's, it's going to come. It's gonna come, you know, to fruition. Yeah. What what about well, what they're saying they're to the kids? Yeah, well, shout out to your daughter and congratulations to her and tell her, you know, mm -hmm. I'm over here rooting I'm for. So <laughs> I know. I, I, I'm just like, wow, my first. I don't even know if I could imagine, but yeah, that's what's up. Yeah. They're really doing some great things. So, but yeah. we have um. David Simon creating new Baltimore crime uh, drama. The man who penned and produced five glorious seasons of The Wire. Oh my God, I didn't realize it was him. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be awesome. I'm already excited. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, y'all. My bad, y'all. All right. So, David Simon is playing. Were you a fan a little bit? <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. I love The Wire, and it was like good to see people that I knew in it. You know, like, oh, I know mm -hmm. him. Oh, Big G, he in that joy. Like, oh, I got to know Snoop. Oh, my God. Like, wow. This is, these are like people from the area in the show. Like, mm -hmm. and it was real. Like, you could go to the neighborhoods and pull up. Like, it just, to know that everything was shot here and like mm -hmm. he really made it authentic and tried to like keep. Um, controversial issues also were arise about, you know, people having crack addicts as mothers and the poverty rate and what the 60s did and how it affected, you know, mm -hmm. the 60s riots, how it affected what Baltimore was like up until that day, you know what I'm saying? So it was, um, it was, I'm sorry, y'all, my son, it was, you know, like a lot. So the fact that he's doing this is very, very awesome. Um, he's planning on renouncing the cast of the classic gritty crime drama of a new series revolving around Baltimore's police force. Wow. So, uh, but don't excited. forget. Yeah, I'm super excited. I'm super excited. Yeah, like it says, don't excited. get it says, it says don't get your it says don't get your hopes up. It would not be a direct connotation of the city life, but it's cool. Hey, I mean, to introduce us to Amsterdam, that's okay. It's been more than a decade since HBO ended its incredibly popular and cultural favorite hustle series, The Wire. And though we're never, we've never gotten a spinoff that we surely would have supported fans. <laughs> yes, we would have, because I would have been so thrilled. Um, something in the vein of the classic show, but not necessarily a blood rel relative. You'll hear you. You here for this, yeah? So yeah, we're, I'm so I'm so here for this. Like I'm excited because yeah, it's I'm about excited. really I what's going on right at least now. Know what the name of the show was going to be though? He didn't tell us none of that. But I'm good friends with uh, a few Baltimore police officers. Let me tell you, first of all, Baltimore. And when people talk about Maryland, people always talk about Baltimore separate as if it is not in separate Maryland. state. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and let me tell you, the Baltimore <laughs> police officers are so different than any other cops. Like, <laughs> they different so, as hell. So, 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 <laughs> they different as hell. Because they got other things, they got bigger things to care about. So they're not caring about, they don't oh care about God. law and this So what do you mean by different? <laughs> enlighten me. Yeah, you said grind me. How do I enlighten me? Because I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> they grimy. They be joking about putting drugs on people. You know what I'm saying these these are the these are the officers that will kill a man the in the one. back of a van and get out the van like ain't nothing happened. 
<laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Inside riots, like these dudes, they they grimy. You know what I mean? And I'm interested to see what type of perspective he puts into this, and I'm I'm eager to see it. So I can't wait. But moving on, we're going to get on to this hot take real quick, real quick. So I illustrate hot take. Pretty much is talking about being broke. <laughs> talking about being broke out here. Are you patient with your partner's lack of funding? Let wow. Yes. Dating, you, dating in coronavirus right now is first off, where are you going? You ain't going nowhere. You, if you're not having a, a virtual day or a movie night in the house, you, what you doing? You walking in a park? It, it ain't, ain't nowhere to go. It's nothing to do. So how dare you tell me you ain't got no funds to date me right now? <laughs> um, <laughs> right now damn near free. You can't afford damn near free right now. <laughs> if you I can't mean, swing, you can and listen, even if you are not working, okay, unemployment done you added that little extra change. If you can't afford your $13.99 Netflix and, and, uh, how much is a is a thing of maybe three sixty nine pop secret popcorn at the grocery store? Oh, we've got problems. <laughs> I think I work a ten dollar <laughs> date. <laughs> so I mean, in these times, I don't even think like dating is really relevant. Like you can't. I mean, you can you can get creative. I feel like making a movie night. I saw somebody do real something sweet for their anniversary. They put a bed in the. They created a bed in the pickup truck. And then got like um, the projector screens and did like a movie and a picnic under the stars oh, type like thing. And those like things, it. like a drive through, and those things are like dirt cheap. You get the blankets and pillows from your house, you know what I'm saying? Or like go to Costco and pick some up and get some cheese and cracker platter. And that's real, that's real dope. But if you have goals and there's things that you are really trying to accomplish, especially aggressively, like right now, I'm being cheap as shit. Like I ain't, <laughs> I'm not trying to spend no coin. And I want to stack all my bread and just make more money on top of making money. So, because I have goals and things that I want to do. And I feel like this time is giving me a time to get ahead. So I can kind mm -hmm. of respect mm -hmm. anyone who say, let me take advantage of this no dating time. And as far as like not spending any money and, you know, we could get creative in other ways and do things that wouldn't cost us anything out of our day-to-day. -day. Mm -hmm. Like popcorn and shit that we get on our day-to-day. -day. Those are snacks that cheese and crackers. Those are things that we got in our pantries. Some of us right now is real dirt right. shit to get a blanket pop a squat on the floor and just put it in front of the TV and get creative with it. Or, you know, play dress up or something like that. <laughs> you okay. know what I'm saying? So okay, we have a little right, role you know. play. Okay. Yeah, but you so know, that's a little role play. patient uh, with lack of funding. So if let's say it wasn't coronavirus going on right now, um and and your date, goal or no goal. Okay. You meet the dude, getting to know the guy. So so this 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 is his time to shine. Okay. This is his time to show you, hey, this is what I bring to the table. This is the kind of man I am, whatever the case may be. Is the amount spent on the date important to you? or where he takes you and things of that matter. All those things are important. Like, do you have a certain standard for your date? Or are you the type of person where you could pretty much do anything as long as you bring a good personality and great conversation? Yeah, I'm kind of one of those people. Like, cause I know that everybody has certain things that's going on. Like if I know you're not really broke, like it's one thing to be broke in ambition and broken mm -hmm. value. I can see the value in someone. Cause we can kind of tell looking at someone whether they mm -hmm. got it or not and how their spending habits really are. And they could just be really trying to say, so I can understand that. But if if you're broke and you lack ambition and you have nothing going on, you have no plans or anything like actively moving forward that I could see like the progress, then yeah, I might have a problem because that means you broke in a lot of other things that I can't, and no amount of money is going to fix that. So yeah, I can be patient if I see that you have goals and you're trying to do things, but I'm not patient for somebody who's just extremely damn cheap for no reason. So I'm going to go so, ahead and say yeah, T-Gray is total opposite. <laughs> T-Gray like that. <laughs> okay. um, I'm not the type of female where the date has to be extravagant, um, but I do like what I like. 
And when it Mm -hmm. comes to dating me, I do have certain expectations. Like if I tell Mm -hmm. you, you know, hey, my most favorite thing is flowers and you dating me and I don't ever get no flowers, never, ever, not even one little single stem something. Yeah, I have a problem with that. You have a problem with that as well. Right. If I have a favorite restaurant and let's say, you know, when we date, we always go to someplace that's 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 moderate, chill, whatever the case may be. But let's say my birthday comes or um, an anniversary, whatever the case may be, just a special night. And say my favorite restaurant might be a little bit more pricey. I want to see that at the very least you, hey, at least once. Take your lady to her favorite yeah, place. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, I'm not going to mm-hmm. act like, you know, you ain't got to spend See, but I think uh, five, that five dollars on a girl, but I do like some places that are high end. I don't expect to have them all the time, special occasions, stuff like that. But show me that you that that you at least appreciate me enough to say, hey, babe, you're worth it. At least one good time. You know what I mean? It ain't got to be all the time. See, one good time. This, this is how I show my level of caliber because I treat myself to all those expensive restaurants as well. So any one I'm with, I'm not expecting for you to do it, but you have to know the kind of girl that I am and the kind of things that I like based on the things that I partake in for myself. Now, again, I'm not expecting for you to do that 360, but I'm expecting for you to understand the things that I like, like you said. So I agree with you on that aspect. But I never mm-hmm. no. But if, like I said, if it's one thing you have goals or whatever, but you also know the person that you dated. It's like, I'm going to know you. You may not like to go out to you, but you might like really nice shoes. Or, mm-hmm. you know, you like to take trips. I at least want to see if the effort is put into something that you, you know, you care enough mm-hmm. to put that a thought into something. Get that away that something. Yeah. Yeah, a little yeah. weekend get away with something. Like, that might be my thing. So I don't have no problem with that. I wanted to get into the live because I had some people on my live, so... So I'm going to dive in just a little bit. Um, I'm I'm a, I'm a T-Gray illustrate, but I'm going to merge it with T-Gray love below real quick. So a lot of <laughs> okay. this, what we're talking a lot of this, what we're talking about right now has a lot to do with our love language. Um, and there's several books about this. Is they're, they're very, very amazing. I can't think of the author's name right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but essentially there are five different love that. languages. Okay, so and then everybody has their own that they speak. You know, it might be touch, it might be rewards, it might be um, access, you know, positive, positive affirmations and things of that nature. It's five different ones, whatever the case may be. And so mine, from time to time, is those small things. You know what I mean? I like to see that. Right, I like to Mm -hmm. see that. Like saying, like, like I'm saying something as simple as flowers. If I say to you, that's my favorite thing, you ain't got to do it every day. But I want to see that you heard it, you recognize it, and that at some point you give them to me to say, hey, you know, that's how you showed me you thought about me. I'm not, I don't mean they got to be $120 long stem box of roses. That's not the case. You can start by Safeway. (laughs) You can start by Safeway. (laughs) Costco got them for cheap. They got desert roses for $13.99. It's stuff like that. Like, you know, when it comes to whether or not uh, the, the dating scene is somebody is being cheap, frugal, if they got the money, don't got the money, whatever the case may be, you got to know what your love language is. And if you're the type broad who you want six course meals, red carpet when I get out, you, you better pull up in a Benz, then make sure that's what you go look for. Make sure that's what you go get. Don't get blue collar dude because he's not going to get that to you. You would never want to make, the, <laughs> to make the person feel like they're less than. That's real talk. Don't seek out some you shit are, that yeah, you yeah. really, that, that's not your match or that you ain't ready for, that you really don't want. Like that's, that that's doesn't say, make no yeah. sense to me. But if, yeah, that's why I said you have to know the caliber of person that you're dating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, if your pocket say it's simple, humble, go ahead and find that, find that it's simple and humble because that ain't me. I'm, I have goals and extravagant things, of course, that I want. So I understand we are working towards a bigger picture. But if we're not on the same page, then yeah, you know, I'm more of like words of affirmation as well, um, and acts mm-hmm. of service. So like, you fix my car or change my tire or show me how oh, to yeah, budget, show me a new routine. 
<laughs> yeah, show me, look, show me, look, show me you can fix some stuff around the house. You know what I'm saying? Like, just girl, girl let me tell you <laughs> <laughs> I got girl, a light in my closet right now that I need the light bulbs changing. I'm mad because <laughs> who's gonna get up there and change this goddamn light? <laughs> My daughter was like, but mom, you can just get one of them little lights you stick and press them. I said, no, I want somebody to come and change this damn light and change it in the closet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and that actually is, that's actually a major yeah. turn on. That's yeah. a major turn on. Yeah. Not only for you to be able to do it, but do it and don't let don't let me ask you. You know what I'm saying? If you see something, right, right that's what I mean. You do it on your own. Oh my God! What are you talking about? You want a new kind of meal? T. Gray gonna make for you for fixing some shit? I ain't asked you to fix. <laughs> oh, like when you take my car to the car wash and you just get it washed, and I come back and my car is washed and detailed. Like, I love you. Gas tank on full. Gas tank on full. Gas tank on full. Guys. Tank on full. Or when they come in the Thank house and they don't even live with you, but they buy you groceries. Thank you. I don't have to go to the store. You got the stuff that I like in my house. Like I just. <laughs> That's a lot of thought. Like somebody going grocery shopping for you and getting the stuff that you actually like. That means they no my know snacks. you. <laughs> no, no my snacks. Exactly. No my regular snacks and no my high snacks because it's two different. It's two different levels. It's two different things. things. I need you to know. Yeah, <laughs> my regular snacks Both and my high snacks. Okay. Because <laughs> yeah, some gotta like, give like. See, see, that's a good dude. I had a dude who like knew I didn't like mayonnaise on sandwiches. And then I was in Brooklyn, my you. He lived in New York. We were in um we were staying in Queens and the Burger King he went to was like way in Brooklyn. And he came back and he realized it had mayonnaise on my sandwich. Do you know? He went all the way back to get it and made sure he had a little warmer to keep it hot. I love you to this day, man. Oh, Shout out to you. Like <laughs> Right, he was amazing, and those little things like I'm like, wow, well, you drove all the way up here for me. Oh, that's so yeah, I love stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with the acts of service. Gifts is probably I'm a giver, so I love to give like gifts and be thoughtful. I love to receive them as well, but like that's like my number three, like my number third one because words of affirmation. Someone who can say who may not speak much, but when they do speak, you kind of listen and they say mm -hmm. some really like really sweet stuff, you know, and it's just so narrated and, and genuine towards you. So those things like get me as well. Or somebody who knows oh, how to read like, yeah, like all all mushy gushy on this joint. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? So I'm not really talking, so I'm back to whatever. Whatever. Nah, I'm I'm back. <clears throat> I'm sorry, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so right now we probably would have this bomb mix right going on. We would have, we would have, have DJ like Cyrus would have been blessing us twice by nine. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I don't have no music to play with us because like I wasn't prepared, but you know, we could talk about some, I guess, some new artists or something like that to see Listen, maybe this like is any what new artists. I'm gonna dive into real quick before we go though. So I listen to um a lot of shows because I'm a media person. Um, I'm always listening to learn, you know what I mean, trying to improve myself. But I was paying attention I need to, to be more like you. Was talking that day. Um, Rihanna is about to drop a whole documentary. Okay. Didn't anybody know that? About what? <laughs> Did anybody know that Rihanna is about to have a whole documentary? It's going to be called Rihanna Volume One. And she's shedding a lot of light on her life and business. And apparently she putting Jay-Z and Beyonce on blast in the documentary. Oh, yeah, I did hear about that. I did hear about that. Yes. So she made a major move from Rock Nation and having her music on title and everything else and put her stuff over on Spotify. And apparently in the documentary, what she's saying is that 
prior to Beyonce's homecoming, Jay Z leaked Rihanna's music early before it was supposed to come out so that it wouldn't interfere with Beyonce's numbers when Homecoming came out. And not only when he leaked it out early on title, then that created the her shift over to Spotify. I was like, not Jay Z. Well, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> no, I, I love Jay Z. And but I also know that that's a man who loves his family at the end of the day. And he can always look out. I mean, I guess Rihanna thought that, because we all can think that when you have a close best friend, right? Like say you had this mentor, this best friend that you really look up to, and he got this certain special love for you because he does have a special love for her. He's very protective of her. However, you can't really have that when you got this dominating power and force over here to your right as well. And that's who you are married to. So at the end of the day, your obligation is to home. I'm not explaining anything that he, or dismissing anything um, that Rihanna claims that, I mean, that he may have done to her. I'm not dismissing that by far, but at the same time, we have to learn to be a little bit more understanding and understand that home is going to be taken care of first. I don't know who you thought you were but I'm going right. to let you know at this point, this is who you are. And I do, I cannot wait to see how the politics out, uh, play out in this uh, documentary. Because yes. this, this now is going to have my whole everything. Because she Caribbean. I want to know all the little background information, how she grew up and all that. But I'm yeah, not mad. I'm not even, I, I expect that from also. Jay. <clears throat> well, yeah. you know what? <laughs> I wouldn't expect that from him because I'm going to be quite honest with you. And it's not even me being a Beyonce fan. When I think of Beyonce and Rihanna, I don't they see don't Rihanna me. being right. Now, granted, Rihanna is a mega star. Don't get me wrong. She is super talented. I love her voice. I love her her line of products. You know what I mean? different she, calibers of people. She's in the game. Don't not taking none of that away from her, but Sorry. when you tell me albums are about to drop and who I think going just slightly edge up, no matter what the case may be, I think Beyonce would have slightly edged up, no matter whatever Jay Z did. To be quite honest with you, no matter whatever Jay Z did, Jay, I, I don't, I don't even see what was the point. Maybe you know what I mean behind the scenes, maybe because I'm a fan and I'm not behind the things. I don't know what the numbers really are, but I think she would have edged up anyway. Yeah, she would have, right? I think it was more to prove a point than to power because Beyonce can drop something. Right, it's power play. Beyonce can drop something overnight and it be a hit. She can literally not tell nobody it's dropping and literally drop it and take over the internet just like that. She has yep. a strong force, right? Mm -hmm. But I also know that she's a woman, you know, and at the end of the day, women, we do have insecurities at times and whether we make it known or not, because I'm not even sure she's the kind of person that would even, she's a Virgo. They ain't even the type to even say they got an insecurity, even though they may have plenty. I like had an album about not, insecurity. <laughs> yeah, she did, but that was actually that was the cheating aspect of that, but not her insecurity is saying that I feel like I'm any less than any other female mm -hmm. that I need you mm -hmm. to do this for me. I think he wanted to do that to prove he was in hot water. He's still making up for that. That is not something that is like what happened in that previous. That is not something that you get over overnight. And then you right. got this other girl that you claiming you close with, and and you her mental, and y'all all real super close. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know if I should really trust that. I don't. I don't think that he did it to hurt Rihanna. Mm -hmm. I think he did it mm -hmm. to better his relationship with his wife. And if we could look at it like that, and she looked at it more so from that aspect that I think that she wouldn't even have no tumultuous feelings towards him whatsoever. But you have to be married sometimes or in a relationship to kind of understand it. Yeah, we're going to yeah, see. Yeah, we're going to see. But thanks for bringing that up, girl. You see. Girl, we're going to see what she going to say and how it's going to play out and really how much tea is she spilling? Because the person who kind of leaked it a little bit was like, yo, it, it, she's spilling all the tea. So, the tea, I'm eager the to see water, hot pot. all of it. No sugar, bitch. Drink this. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> this is straight. Matter of fact, let me add some rum and tequila to this and some kayak because your chest going to burn yes, and man. blow up by the yes, time I'm like, done. Sweat by the time I get finished. Yeah. So I'm <laughs> I'm eager to see what is said and what comes out and just do, you know, kind of learn a little bit more about her. But I don't really care about that. I just want to know what she's going to say about Beyonce. <laughs> yeah, I want to know what she's going to say about Beyonce and Jay-Z too. I kind of do want to hear about that. And I kind of hope she touches on the Chris situation as well. I kind of want to hear about that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I want to hear her new truth because and... I feel like it might change. Wrap it up. Hey, will you, you think she might say, yeah, I fucked him up in that car? <laughs> yeah, I think she. Yes, I think I she will. Because she kind of, I, I, I felt like she kind of wanted to say that the last time and somebody was telling her like you're going to discredit yourself but again all the caribbean women and she wasn't when we were tweeting her and saying menua say your box him up menua say your lick him up she wasn't denying any of that she never said i did not put my hands back on him she literally just said what he did so i want to kind of just go back into that to see wow that's what really sparked it cuz i know like island women we not we not rocking I'm sorry. We're going to take a box. We'll give the box right the fuck back. So, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> this has been fun, though. This has been fun. I miss Chalk, but this has been great. Yeah, I miss Chalk. Yeah, too. Happy miss Wednesday. Chalk too. Yeah, and Cyrus, too. Yeah, we need the music. I be needing them breaks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need them breaks too. I'm trying to go to the bathroom real quick. We really just not enjoying it out. I'm so proud of us. <laughs> I was like, damn, we got to pause right now. <laughs> like, like, yeah. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. My name is Lucky, and I'm so glad that everybody got a chance to sit down with me and see Gray tonight. Um, you can find me at Lucky Lay underscore Marie, or, you know, I got a million. I'm Jamaican, so of course we got a million accounts just like we got a million jobs. Um, at Magical AF Podcast, or at Cincy Suites on IG, Facebook, Twitter, and all your other platforms. Just Google me, baby. But where can they find you, Tigray? So you can find your girl at the love below underscore sex talk with T Gray. Make sure you check out my Corona Chronicles, which has just been phenomenal. I'm enjoying it. I'm talking to comedians about this pandemic and how it's affecting the sex and comedy. Um, it's been dope. It's been dope. And I got some I got some major hitters coming up soon. So I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm gonna say I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. So they can also find you on YouTube at the love below. Yeah, I'm everywhere. I'm on Facebook. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Instagram. Um, of course, everything is at the love below underscore sex talk with T Gray. If you go to my YouTube, <laughs> sex talk with T Gray is there. If you hit my Instagram, the link to my YouTube's there. If you hit this, that's the like you can't go okay. nowhere. Right, so you so you, I mean, you can't you can't miss her. You cannot miss her or us. I you know that my hair so just click the link. <laughs> he hit, look, all her mo- Let me tell you something. She comes in slaying every week. And I just want to tell you that we admire your beauty and thank you because you've given me some go. You inspired me to actually be like, you know, well, let me do something with this. Okay. Like, oh, he can come back here every week. It's at eight o'clock. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I recently cut my hair and I had no makeup on, no like none of this was happening. At it don't matter, but you I do this for y'all. You pulled it together like it was flawless, <laughs> like it was effortless. So yeah. But anyway, y'all, thank you for being here with us. Yeah. We really appreciate y'all and we look forward to y'all being back with us next week. Catch us on yeah, Illustrate Radio and listen there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> All right, y'all have a good one. Do this. Bye.